All right. I want to thank you all for attending today. Uh, this is the fourth installment of a 10 webinar series that myself and Dr. Bill Vandergrift are doing. So if you happen to have missed any of the earlier webinars, don't worry. Uh, you can actually still get replays. Just go to either bluebonnetfeeds.com or uh, strideanimalhealth.com and then click on the webinars tab. Uh, if you scroll down to the bottom of that page, you'll be able to find all of our uh, replay webinars. So my name is Dr. Jimmy Nichols. I am the Director of Nutrition for Blue Bonnet Feeds and Stride Animal Health. And today I am going to be discussing a unique nutritional technology. Um, it's something that we normally don't think about in terms of um, an oral supplement that we would give to our horse. So without further ado, uh, let's dive into the topic of plasma and why it is, in my opinion, one of the best things that you could actually be feeding to your horse. So let's start off with what, what is plasma? So plasma is the clear kind of yellow colored liquid portion of blood that remains after you take away the red blood cells, white blood cells, uh, platelets and, and any other cellular components. So it's comprised, um, it makes up about 55% of the total volume of blood and it essentially contains uh, water, salts, enzymes, antibodies and other proteins. So in humans, uh, plasma is commonly given to like trauma and burn and shock patients. It's often used in people with uh, severe liver diseases and in people who have like multiple clotting factor deficiencies. So it's, it helps boost blood volume, which can prevent shock and it helps with blood clotting. Now in horses, uh, we typically see plasma used in three different situations. So in foals, let's say that you have a failure of the passive transfer of antibodies from the mother to the foal. So meaning the, the circulating IgG levels are less than 400 milligrams per deciliter after about 12 hours of birth. So that, that normally happens if that baby didn't get adequate colostrum from the mare. Um, that, that usually occurs when maybe the mare, maybe she had premature lactation, uh, you know, maybe she was leaking some of her milk before that foal was born, which so colostrum is the mare's first milk. And if the baby doesn't get that first milk, he's not going to get all of the antibodies that are in it. Um, another reason that a foal maybe wouldn't get that first milk or that colostrum is if maybe he wasn't able to get up and nurse or maybe that mare wouldn't let him nurse. Um, so there's there's a lot of reasons that a foal doesn't get um, the passive transfer of antibodies from that mare. And so what typically happens is a vet will come out and hang a bag of plasma, IV for that foal. Um, and we do that because plasma is so rich in all of those antibodies that that foal needs in order to be healthy and have a strong immune system. Now, the next place that we would see uh, plasma used would be um, PRP therapy or platelet-rich plasma is what that stands for. Um, basically, PRP treatment is used to essentially kind of jumpstart the healing cascade and then speed up the process of um, tissue regeneration. So that can be done you know, for skin, bone, uh, soft tissues, so specifically things like tendons and ligaments, but it can also be used to treat um, things like eye ulcers, uh, skinned wounds, and it's really um, effective in areas that have poor uh, vasculature or poor blood flow. So PRP is an area that um, people may be familiar uh, with plasma. Now, the third area that people are, are probably most familiar with the use of plasma in horses is going to be in IRAP therapy. So in IRAP therapy, basically what we're doing is you're pulling the horse's own blood. So you're taking a blood draw from the horse and then that blood is centrifuged and it's, it's used essentially to create um, something called ACS or um, autologous conditioned serum. Okay, 
So then that final ACS, that serum product is injected then into joints. Um, it's really effective at treating inflammation, lameness, and then it's, it's, I mean, really good at just encouraging that joint to in the healing process. So the first three forms are all in liquid state. Um, all of those three forms of plasma are administered through a needle, but the fourth form of plasma and what we're gonna be talking about today is actually an oral supplement, okay? So in this case, uh, porcine blood is actually sourced from a federally inspected facility. Um, it's then centrifuged down to essentially isolate the plasma. Um, that plasma would then be fractioned into a concentrated serum. And we do that to preserve the biologically active proteins um, that are so essential and so important in plasma. So it's those biologically active proteins that are known to support and maintain the normal immune function and the normal inflammatory responses. So those are the things that we're really after here. Okay, so the serum is then thermally treated, it's dried down, and then it's analyzed to make sure that it meets uh, both safety and quali quality uh, specifications. So at that point then, you're left with this dried powder, kind of like the picture on the screen, and that dried powder can then be used uh, and put into a pellet that a horse can eat on a daily basis, which is what we mean when we say oral plasma. Okay, so it's a, it's a way for a horse to actually consume the plasma through their mouth or through their diet. While this technology is relatively new to the equine industry, it really, I mean, it really is a decades old science. Um, in fact, there are over 500 published peer reviewed scientific studies uh, that support the benefits of using orally dosed plasma. Um, in fact, it's, it's actually been studied in everything from humans to horses, uh, cattle, swine, poultry. I mean, they've, they've even looked at this uh, using plasma in aquaculture, okay? So it's, it's definitely nothing new. Uh, the data, I mean, across species, the data consistently returns the same message. I mean, orally dosed plasma is going to support and maintain a healthy immune system. It helps reduce inflammation within the body. It helps improve gut dysfunction, and it can even improve range of motion in joints. So let's, uh, let's dig a little deeper into all of that. So biologically active proteins. Um, you know, in a perfect world, that's really probably the name that I would prefer to use for this technology, and that's how I would, I would rather talk about it. Um, but I think that those words can actually sound just a little bit intimidating. <laughs> so let's break them down. Uh, biological basically means that it's relating to living organisms. Okay? Active means that something is capable of modifying its state in response to something else. And then proteins are simply long chains of amino acids that are essential to all living organisms. So in short, plasma has biological actions that really go beyond the scope of basic nutrition, which basically means that, that these proteins are providing far more benefit to the animal than just supplying amino acids, okay? So they aren't proteins in, in the way that we would typically think of, you know, nutritional proteins. So I keep using the word plasma, and I do this because that's how you as a horse owner are going to see it written on uh, a label under the ingredients list. So the term animal plasma is actually the definition that's been assigned uh, by the American Association of Feed Control Officials. So we as a company can't deviate from that. We actually have to use the words animal plasma on the ingredient list. So as much as I would love to call them biologically active proteins, um, I'm gonna have to stick with animal plasma. Uh, so on a side note, you're probably wondering why do I have a picture of a pig on the screen? Um, as I mentioned earlier, our plasma is sourced from porcine or swine. Okay, so sometimes I think that people, when I say that, they look at me kind of strange and they're like, why would I wanna put something from a pig in my horse? But if you think about it, uh, doctors actually routinely source heart valves from pigs and use them in, in humans. So in my mind, if a pig is good enough for me, 
I'm gonna say it's probably good enough for my horse. <laughs> so let's dig into some of the uh, biologically active proteins that are found in plasma. So first we have peptides. Peptides are molecules that play a role in uh, metabolic functions within the body. So they consist essentially of short chains of amino acids. So when I say short chains, that basically means between two and 50 amino acids that are all linked together. And those, um, those peptides actually send signals to cells within the body uh, to let them know how they should function or how they should respond. So uh, hormones would be a really good example of peptides. Um, immunoglobulins, those are antibodies that are made by the immune system. And they are specifically, uh, their purpose is to fight off invaders, such as bacteria, viruses, toxins, pathogens. Um, IgG is an example. Uh, I mentioned that earlier in the full slide. Um, IgG is the most abundant type of antibody in the, in the system. Albumin uh, is a protein that is, um, it's really helpful at, at nourishing tissues. Okay, so it keeps fluid from leaking out of the blood vessels. And it's, um, it's, it helps transport hormones and vitamins, minerals, drugs, uh, and, and other components throughout the body. And then lastly, growth factors. So these are proteins that are actually made by the body uh, that function to help regulate uh, cell growth and cell survival. So they are absolute, absolutely essential to the body. Okay. So let's talk about plasma. Um, let's talk about what it does for a horse uh, on a level that we can relate to maybe just a little bit easier, okay? So, so plasma improves the efficiency of the immune system so that the horse doesn't have to spend all of its time uh, fighting stressors, okay? So let's take a look at this chart. We have two horses, the horse on the left who is not getting plasma and then the horse on the right who is getting plasma. All right, so I hope you can appreciate that one is happy and one is not. Check out the ears, okay? So the horse that's getting plasma is happy and compliant. The horse that is not getting plasma looks grouchy, grumpy. It's how we might see a horse that's dealing with some digestive issues, okay? So the first thing I want you to look at is the black section within um, each of these pie charts that's labeled as maintenance. Okay, notice that there is the same amount of black in the chart for both horses. So what that's signifying is that no matter what we do with a horse, there is a certain amount of energy that goes towards just sustaining basic life. So that maintenance section of that pie chart is going to remain unchanged no matter what we do. So now I want you to look at the gold section. So that section represents the amount of energy that a horse must put toward having a properly functioning immune system. So notice in the left chart, the horse that is not happy, the horse that is not on plasma, okay, uh, his gold section is much larger than the horse on the right. So that means that the horse on the right, who is being fed plasma on a daily basis, uh, has a more efficient immune system, which basically means that his body doesn't have to work as hard to maintain a normal immune response. So uh, everything that's left in the chart after uh, considering both the maintenance and the immune system is gonna be represented in blue. And we're labeling that with uh, performance. Now, that basically means that whatever energy the body has left over after satisfying those basic needs, um, the maintenance, and then the immune system, okay, the gold section, can essentially be put towards things that, I mean, we as horse owners are actually gonna really care about, okay? So things like body condition, um, the ability to maintain a healthy pregnancy, just their general outward appearance, that bloom, that shine, um, athletic ability, and then, you know, essentially just the chance to express their um, genetic potential to the maximum capacity. Um, and of course, I mean, that list could go on. There are so many things that we expect or want out of our horses. So since the immune system is working more efficiently in the horse on the right who receives the plasma, that horse essentially has more resources available to put towards the things that are gonna make um, him successful as a horse and make us happier as horse owners. 
All right, so let's get into how that works. This whole, you know, how are we improving the immune system and the immune function? So in yesterday's webinar, uh, Dr. Vandergriff explained really in, in quite excellent detail the intricacies of the immune system. So again, that replay is available on the website, so I am not going to go nearly in depth as, as what he did. So I encourage you guys to uh, skip back and, and check that webinar out. So I'm just gonna hit the high notes here. So the intestinal lining essentially serves as uh, what we call a selective barrier. So what that means is it's going to allow certain nutrients in, and then it's gonna keep bad things like toxins and pathogens out, okay? So it really, um, the, the tight junctions are what we would consider the keepers of the gate, so to speak, okay? So here's, here's maybe a scenario that might help you understand uh, what's going on. Okay, I'm gonna compare a doctor's clinic to the horse's body. So when you go to the doctor, you have to have an appointment, right? You can't just walk in and talk to the doctor anytime you feel like it, okay? When you arrive at the doctor, you are essentially screened by the front desk clerk. So think of the clerk as the person or what controls the tight junction, okay? She verifies your name, your information, and she confirms that you have an appointment, okay? And then that clerk decides who can and cannot get back through the door to actually see the doctor, okay? So the only way that you're gonna see that doctor is if that front desk clerk decides that you're okay to go in and see the doctor. So that's what happens in a properly functioning doctor's office. That is also what is happening in a properly functioning digestive tract, okay? So now let's imagine a doctor's office that has no front desk clerk, no appointment or scheduling calendar. And let's say that the door back to the, op the doctor is just always open, unlocked, and not monitored, okay? Essentially, anybody can go back there that they want, that wants to. So in that situation, people can essentially flood the clinic. They could completely overwhelm the doctor uh, because they have direct access to him. And then that does a couple of things. Number one, the doctor, who in our situation is like the immune system, becomes completely overwhelmed, cannot provide care to all of the patients. And then number two, the people that are flooding into the back rooms of, of the clinic are exposing all of the sterile equipment to diseases that they carry, which ultimately makes an unsafe environment for the clinic, the horse's body, which then has to stop doing business, okay? So the way that plasma is going to help this situation is by supporting the tight junction function, okay, which then reduces intestinal permeability, okay, and that's going to prevent those toxins from penetrating, and it's going to reduce the expression of mucosal pro-inflammatory cytokines, okay, so that's what's going on. Now, the benefits of plasma start in the gut, um, but what's really unique and what research has shown is that the bioactive proteins in plasma can actually move throughout the body by way of what is called the common mucosal immune system. Uh, so once the plasma associates with what is called gut-associated lymphoid tissue or GALT, it then can actually move uh, to peripheral areas. So specifically soft tissue sites throughout the body. So things like the lungs and the reproductive tract. So by way of what is called BALT, so the bronchus associated lymphoid tissue, uh, those bioactive proteins in plasma can actually help reduce uh, the ratio of pro-inflammatory to anti-inflammatory cytokines. Okay, so uh, this is really beneficial in horses who suffer from um, lung conditions or airway conditions. So things like seasonal allergies, um, recurrent airway obstruction, which is also known as heaves, uh, horses with exercise-induced pulmonary hemorrhage, which we commonly refer to as bleeders or, or bleeding. Um, so plasma, that's how plasma is actually getting to the lungs and providing that anti-inflammatory support, okay? It's moving through that common mucosal immune system and accessing the um, lymphoid tissues to have those anti-inflammatory effects. So 
on a on a very side note, did you guys know that the total lung capacity of a horse is about 55 liters? Okay, I remember being taken aback by that the first time that I saw a set of lungs um, during a necropsy in graduate school. So we actually pulled the lungs, look at them, inflated them to maximum capacity. I mean, they are absolutely enormous. All right, let's jump over to pregnancy rates. So plasma is beneficial um, in all aspects of reproductive health. Um, the study, the particular study that's related to this graph actually used a mouse model to show that under travel stress, uh, females receiving plasma were actually able to maintain their pregnancies um, at the same level as their counterparts who were not subjected to any stress. So the orange bar on the far left is the lab's normal pregnancy rate when there's absolutely no stress. So it's about 41 and a half percent. Then the four blue bars on the right are actually different groups of females that were that were exposed to stress, but they were also given plasma. OK, and so you can see that they range in pregnancy rates from 35 to percent up to the, the lab's normal average of 41 and a half percent. OK, but the shortest bar here, so that yellow one, the second to the left, is the control group. So that is the group of females who received no plasma, but they did undergo the same travel stress as all of the groups in the blue. OK, so statistically speaking, every group of female that was on plasma had the same pregnancy rate as the group that was not stressed at all, okay? While the control group, who did not receive any plasma, had a pregnancy rate of less than 5%, okay? That is not good. <laughs> I don't know how many of you are familiar with, with normal pregnancy rates and anything, but 5% is just flat, not good, right? So the theory here is that by supporting a normal response in the immune system, um, essentially more energy and more nutrients are available for reproductive functions and to help support that embryo growth um, versus being diverted back to support the immune response. So, you know, think back to that, uh, the pie charts of the happy horse and the angry horse. Okay, when you can um, help that horse be more efficient in the immune system, uh, you've got more room for performance. And remember that one of those factors in that performance category was reproduction. So ultimately, I mean, anytime you can reduce inflammation in the uterine mucosa, it's going to increase the chance of establishing and maintaining a pregnancy. So let's talk full health for a second then. We just talked about uh, mares and the pregnancy. So feeding plasma uh, to a mare can actually support the full health as well. So not only can you help that mare um, establish that pregnancy, uh, the research has shown that, so later on in that pregnancy, mares that have been on plasma actually have lower levels of TNF-alpha. So that basically is just an, an inflammatory marker, okay? So then at foaling, those mares also have higher IgG antibody levels. And so if you remember, um, IgG is the, are the immunoglobulins with the, which the body needs in order to fight off uh, bacteria and viruses and other harmful invaders. The other thing that, that researchers found was when they looked at the foals themselves, they found that the foals who came from mares who were on plasma actually had lower inflammatory, inflammatory cytokines at foaling. So that basically tells us that those foals were actually less stressed, therefore their immune system was functioning better at just after birth. All right, now here's an interesting find that kind of, um, that it came out of one of the studies that was done by Texas A&M, um, and it was a little bit, uh, I guess, surprising for me at least. Uh, so, so the researchers there found that feeding plasma actually increased stride length and improved the range of motion in the hawk, okay? So, we don't know the exact mode of action here, but the theory is that plasma is helping the body um, basically clear the normally occurring inflammation a little bit quicker than, than it typically would. So, you know, anytime a horse exercises or undergoes any kind of, of workload, 
I mean, there's going to be normal inflammation that occurs. That That's a normal process. Um, along with that workload, I mean, so think of a time where you went and worked out and maybe you lifted weights a little harder, maybe you ran a little longer, or maybe you were working out for the first time in forever, okay? The next day or, you know, within 24 to 36 hours, you were definitely feeling some soreness, okay? So it's possible that, you know, these horses, if they, that were on the plasma, if that inflammation is being moved out of there quicker and the body is able to uh, essentially recover faster, it's thought that maybe, um, maybe there's less soreness in these horses, which is then allowing those horses to uh, essentially move more freely. So that, that mode of action is still um, needs some investigation, but that's kind of what, what the theory is right now and what's going on. All right, so gastric ulcers. Uh, now there's a word I'll bet everyone is familiar with. <laughs> Uh, researchers at Iowa State actually found that feeding plasma uh, prevents ulcer formation, uh, specifically in the upper portion of the, the stomach, so the squamous tissue, okay? So what they did is they took 30 horses, um, basically from a, a private training facility. So they took horses all with ulcer scores of zero. Uh, they fed those horses just a normal, you know, typical diet, so they put them on uh, two percent body weight of hay, so a grass alfalfa mix, and then they gave them two pounds of oats twice a day. Okay, now they split the horses in half, and half of the group received a placebo, and the other half received plasma. So then they underwent basically um, a 21-day period of normal, you know, daily tasks and routines that would happen on a training facility. So you know, being broke to ride, being put on the hot walker. Um, you know, doing just normal, normal exercises that you would expect out of, of a young horse. Um, they were also, you know, taught how to load in a trailer and, and hauled uh, around town a bit. So just normal, normal things that you would do with a horse, okay? Then at the end of that three-week period, those horses were re-scoped. And what the researchers found was that when plasma was fed at 200 and gram, 210 grams per day, uh, plasma did indeed significantly prevent ulcer formation, okay? And so for all of you science buffs, that p-value was 0 0.0001, okay? So the actual numbers on that, for those of you who really don't care about p-values or know what that, that is, um, essentially for about 14% of horses that were on plasma developed ulcers over that stressful three-week period, whereas 86% of the horses that were on the the placebo develop them, okay? So we're not saying that plasma absolutely 100% prevents all ulcers. What we're saying is that there's a statistically significant uh, improvement um, or ability to prevent them, okay? So the thought or the theory on what's going on here is that um, the plasma may be helping prevent those ulcers basically by reducing the inflammation within the gastric mucosa. Um, and so that, um, those same results have been seen in, in multiple species. Okay, so now, uh, this all sounds great, but where do, we, where do you find it, right? So in, in my professional opinion, I mean, if I was asked, if someone asked me to choose only one nutritional technology to give to my horse, plasma is, is definitely it. So the fact that, I mean, there are over 500 published studies supporting its benefits is, is a big deal for me. Okay, then uh, what makes it really unique from other products on the market is just how it's able to enter the body through the tissues in the gut, but then move to different areas throughout the body by way of the common mucosal immune system. So it, I get that it probably kind of sounds a little bit like a miracle product, and I guess maybe, I mean, maybe it is. Um, I mean, where else can you find an ingredient with that much research showing that it can benefit so many areas of the body? I mean, gut, lungs, reproductive tract, increased stride length, improve, you know, improve the range of motion in the hawks, and then on top of all of that, um, help prevent gastric ulcers. So Stride Animal Health is the exclusive supplier. Okay, I'm going to say that again the exclusive supplier of plasma for horses in the United States, okay? You can't get this particular form of plasma from anyone else, okay? So the supplement is called Lifeline Plus. 
and it's available in um, what we call a tiny pellet form. So it's basically a one eighth inch pellet. Um, most horses find it to be quite palatable. Now there are always those picky eaters out there and no supplement, you know, I don't care what supplement we're talking about, nothing is perfect when it comes to palatability. Um, but if you introduce it to them correctly um, and slowly, especially if you know you have a picky eater, um, what we've seen is that about 95% of horses will eat it without any problem. Um, and then just this month, Blue Bonnet Feeds uh, has launched a, a brand new uh, beet pulp based feed, which is designed um, really specifically with leaky gut syndrome in mind. Um, and that feed is called Equiline ProCare. Uh, and the plasma is actually included in that feed. So you have really two um, outstanding options for, for providing plasma to your horse. So with that, um, I wanna thank you all for attending. I would love to um, take any questions. Uh, if you have questions, um, feel free to submit them through the chat. I think I forgot to mention that to you guys up, at, up front. Um, the chat, you have the option actually to send the chat to everyone so that everybody on the webinar can see it. You can send chats directly to me so that only I can see them. Um, so don't be scared to, to type your questions in there if, if there's something that you wanna know. So uh, during the, the webinar, I actually did, um, it looks like I got a couple questions come through directly to me. Let me see what those are. Okay, so I it says, I have a mare that I'm going to breed. Uh, when should I start plasma and how much should I feed? Okay, so typically uh, what I recommend is getting the mare started on the plasma um, at least 30 days, but preferably 60 days prior to when you are going to try to start either breeding or flushing her. Okay, so we wanna make sure that the plasma has um, plenty of time to get into the body and, and start with its effectiveness. I then keep that mare on plasma through the entirety of um, pregnancy and through lactation, okay? So if you've got a mare that, you know, is basically being bred every single year, um, essentially she stays on plasma, okay? And if you just, if you have a mare that, you know, maybe you're just gonna try to get one cold out of her, um, essentially after you have weaned that baby, you could then take her back off of plasma um, I do highly recommend, though, getting the full started on plasma at, at time of weaning, just to kind of help support um, some of that stress that occurs during weaning. Um, let's see, here's another question. It says, uh, "Is uh, okay, so is oral plasma a substitute for hanging an IV bag of plasma for a full? Okay, glad, I'm glad somebody asked that question. So. No, this is not a substitute for the oral plasma that a vet would hang for a foal, okay? Um, for the main reason, I mean, uh, well, a few reasons. Number one, you need to get those antibodies for that foal. I mean, time is a critical measure, okay? And you've got to get the, the, them in, into him fast, and you've got to get them in at the right volume. And so hanging that bag of plasma and IVing into the body directly is, is the only way to make that happen. Um, and then secondly, you know, I mean, a foal isn't going to understand how to eat anything like this uh, right after they're born. So it would be unrealistic to expect them to be able to eat um, really any of it, and especially not at, at the volumes that we would want to for, for that maximum kind of effectiveness. Okay. Um, let's see. Here's an, one more question. So does ProCare have the full daily dose of plasma built in? I'm glad that got asked as well. So ProCare does not have the performance dose built in. So if you look at um, the Lifeline pail, so the supplement, the feeding directions there, there are three different levels. So there's a maintenance dose, there's a performance dose, and then there's like a... Um, intense, uh, highly intense or stressed dose. <coughs> Excuse me. So the, the performance dose is the dose that we would recommend for horses that are in training, undergoing, you know, normal uh, hauling, stalling, training, all of those normal stressors, okay? 
um, the maintenance dose would be, if it's half of that, um, that would be good for those horses that maybe are not under a lot of stress, but you wanna do what everything you can from a preventative maintenance standpoint. Um, if you've got you know, horses that uh, maybe go through certain times of the year where they're worked pretty hard, and then other times of the year where they're not worked as hard, maybe you do performance dose during the more intense times of the year, and then you could drop back to that maintenance dose during kind of their, their lower times of the year. Now, the, the stressed or the, the highest dose, that is the rate that was used in those studies at Iowa State for the, the ulcer prevention. So if you are trying to use this um, specifically for horses that are dealing with gastric ulcers, uh, you definitely want to use that highest rate, that, that intense uh, rate. Now, ProCare contains plasma at 25% of the maintenance dose of Lifeline, okay? So it's going to be a good just kind of daily uh, preventative, daily maintenance. Uh, but if you really have a horse that, that you want to provide, you know, full, full support for, I would recommend coming back on top of that with some Lifeline. Um, you can do the maintenance dose on top of that um, and, and get, get a pretty good response. So the reason that it's not in there at, at full rate is just um, the, the cost that it would create in that bag of feed. I uh, didn't imagine that we, were, we didn't really think that people would want to pay $50 for a bag of feed. So um, we kind of had to um, make, make choices on how much to put in there. So let's see, we've got another question here. It says, I have a three-year-old who was a juvenile, arth who has juvenile arthritis. Um, she's been on fish oil factor for a year, recently started on orthomax and surge. That's very good. Okay. So should I add lifeline or do a certain amount of time with orthomax and then move to lifeline? She's been brought home from the trainer and into light work to evaluate how much she can handle going forward. Okay, so in that situation, so since you've actually got things going on physically in the joint, I think you're better off to stick with your orthomax surge fish oil regimen. Um, so keep in mind that, that Lifeline's function is more from a soft tissue standpoint. So keeping those tendons and ligaments limber, helping the recovery time, keep keeping the soreness down in them, okay? It's not um, necessarily able to function. Um, it doesn't have any, you know, cartilage rebuilding capabilities or um, those support factors like what Orthomax would. Um, and then Surge, um, you would be using that as Surge is essentially, um, it helps vasodilate and increase circulation. So it's going to help carry those building blocks uh, into the joint more effectively. So I think Surge and Orthomax is definitely uh, the best combination to be using in that situation. Uh, here's a very straightforward question. How much is the new feed? <laughs> That's a good question. It depends where you live. Um, in general, it's going to be priced pretty similarly to what the uh, Blue Bonnet Intensify Senior Therapy is. So um, I, I honestly do not know off the top of my head what that feed even sells for. I, I think it's in the low to mid 20s, um, but it's, it's typically in that range. All right. Well, I want to um, I want to thank everyone today. It looks like I'm through the questions. So um, keep in mind there will be a replay of this available. Everybody who signed up and attended will get the replay sent to them via email um, either tomorrow or Monday. Um, you're welcome to um, use and share that um, however you want. Uh, also, please keep a watch out in your email for a special code that you can use to purchase a Lifeline. So with that, I want to thank you all for attending. Um, have a happy Friday. Have a blessed Easter. And we look forward to seeing everyone uh, next week on Thursday for uh, the fifth installment of our webinar series. So thank you again.